Okay, so I found this old filing cabinet, obviously made of metal. Now I've cut a, a six inch hole out of the top and I've got a bit of seven inch um, air conditioning pipe, which I've just screwed into the back with a couple of screws just to hold it in place. And you have to bear in mind that this cabinet is not gonna be airtight, but we'll see if we can botch it all together. I've, a little, I've put a little bit of a four inch op stand on top of the exit port and I've stuffed some ceramic fibre around the outside and I've coated or covered the ceramic fibre with some tin foil to try and you know make it a little bit safer. And yeah there's a bit of smoke coming out I've just lit the fire obviously um, but we put the chimney in place and yeah after well I mean I've only just lit it but there is smoke coming out of the chimney which I guess is not um, to be unexpected I guess that was what you know is going to happen because we're not going directly into the chimney anymore, we're going down through the cabinet. Now, instantly, we've got temperatures, oh, no, I'll say instantly, this is probably about 10 minutes after it's been lit, but we're getting temperatures up to 300 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm trying to use Fahrenheit in this video because it turns out that 95% of the people watching my videos are from America. So I'll try and stick to Fahrenheit for the time being. You can see the pretty much temperatures it's working. I, I'm, I'm astounded that it worked so easily. I mean, there's no bypass. It's just started working straight away. We've only got 59 Fahrenheit at the base of the second chimney. So we can expect the temperatures to go up. You can see the, the four inch up stand I put on top of the exit. I don't know if this helps or not. Now that is still about 12 inches away from the top. And even with that distance, you know, we're getting up to 350 degrees now. Just to prove the point, I'll put a little bit of water on it. Um, yeah, it's definitely pretty hot. Every time I walk near the stove, it just gets so hot. So the ambient temperature on the gravel is 60 degrees. And I'll just shine the gun on a few little bits. I don't think it works on reflective surfaces, and I know it doesn't work through glass. So I'm just trying to hit various bits of Mickey lights, and hopefully it's giving us reasonably accurate readings. I mean, I'm just absolutely gobsmacked that this is just working so well. I, I wasn't. I thought there might be a few more teething problems, but uh, we're running around about 300 degrees um, directly above our little mini riser. So I thought, let's have a go. Let's have a go adding some wood and see if we can raise the temperatures. See what happens. I'll poke it around a little bit and stick these fresh bits of wood. And these are just, I don't know, eight inch long pieces of softwood. So I think it's going to go start over fueling pretty much instantly, which you can see. Look at that. It's amazing. That just absolutely it's over fueling like mad. But if we get the door on and uh, we'll see what happens, I'll push it right in. So we're not we're only going to after the natural fact I've left it about 10 mil or half an inch open at the bottom. But that's primarily um, secondary air and it's straight away. It's calmed down. Uh, I think it just in a few minutes time. I think it takes a couple of minutes for it to start working, but even that, I mean, that is, to me, that's under control. Um, we'll have a look up the chimney in a minute, see if there's any smoke, because if you remember the last time, well, a few, not a week or so ago, when I tried that, I mean, the black smoke pouring out the top of the chimney was outrageous, and so were the flames, I mean, it became quite scary. But, um, no, so, I mean, literally, it, it just works so well. The secondary air definitely functions very well. So the fire has been lit for, I think it's about three quarters of an hour now, and the temperatures have definitely going up. I gave it that little uh, extra boost, and that has made a difference. So, I mean, I'm not really familiar with Fahrenheit, and I'm trying to make comparisons with my J-tube. I don't think it's quite as hot as my six inch J-tube. In fact, I'm fairly sure it's not that great in the barrel. But nevertheless, I mean, 460 degrees Fahrenheit is well hot enough for cooking, probably getting a little bit too hot. And it was at this stage that I realised that my secondary air, there's the little pieces of Michelite, which I'd silicon to the glass, which inevitably were going to fall off, have fallen off. So I don't think it's actually working as well as it should. But I've stuck some ceramic fibre, and look at that. As soon as you put the block up the secondary air, it immediately goes into this smoky overfuel. I mean, flip that out, and within other probably 30 seconds, I mean, it comes right back down. So now the fire's been running for well over an hour. I've just come back to it. I went inside, I had a drink, and I've come back out. It's still running. The flames are still going. We've only got 78 on the exit. I'm totally successful.
you have to bear in mind that the whole contraption is very Heath Robinson and if you don't know who he is look him up on the internet one of my favorite characters from the 1930s